No, no, this is uh. <laughs> okay. This is, uh, this is my thing. Yeah, okay. you take it. It's focus on your. Oh no. Just... <sighs> what up, YouTube? I am your host. Mediocre tutorials and reviews back in here with yet one more video joined today by a very special guest, Sydney. Hey. Hey. Thank you for joining. You're welcome. Yeah. I'm excited. You, yeah, thank you. I, I'm, I'm happy that you're excited. I think we got a really good video today. Um, and I know you're not familiar with this, but the grapevine. Yeah, get me hip. The, the grapevine, so I've uh, I've seen a couple of their videos and um, essentially it's a bunch of beautiful black people get, uh, educated black people sit around in the table and talk about hot topics in society, in society today. Now the one that I wanted to talk about today is the one that they did on the question, is there a war on masculinity? Which, yes. You think that there is, though? Even starting off before this, you, yeah. you think that there's a war on it? Yeah, I do think so, but I think we also have to redefine how we're defining masculinity. It should. You think that it should change? You mean define what masculinity means before we, yeah. we go into it? Because there is a war on masculinity, yes, but I think also that people think they're fighting the war in a way that's not conducive. Okay. That's not conducive. And okay. we need to define what masculinity is before we can fight a war on it, you know? Who, who, who's fighting that war? You think men are fighting that war or women are fighting that war? I think there's an attack on masculinity. I agree with you. Who is attacking? Feminists. Okay, Let wait. me answer for you. Yeah, no, no, I don't disagree. <laughs> I don't disagree totally. Because feminism wasn't even meant for black people. Um, which it I wasn't. Think, which I think. Oh, you woke girl. People, I'm woke. You woke girl. I'm woke. I'm you, telling you. She woke woke. Yeah, you you know. Okay. And so, but I think that the thing is like, well, I'm specifically focused on black masculinity mm. because I don't really, and I think that's what they're focusing on too. The, yeah. So, but but we'll let's see. So we'll see how this video goes. But maybe we need our own separate conversation outside of the video because I feel like that there's things that we can hit on specific to yeah. what you just said that it wasn't created for us. But yeah. then there's those of us who still uh, grab onto it as if yeah. it is a defining factor in our culture. Absolutely, and fight for it first before our culture too. Right. And I think before anything, you're black, so yeah. you gotta keep that in mind before being woman, before being gay. Well, yeah, anything. I think a lot of in a lot of what they teach is a lot of the reason why there is some of the breakdown in the home, in my opinion. There's other things outside of that, and we can get into those as well. But I think like the war on what it means to be a man or that challenging of what that is or what it means to be a man is somehow toxic. Like, I think it just, it's killing, a, yeah. it's killing a lot mm -hmm. of um, what it means to be in the difference between a man and a woman. Mm -hmm. um, but anyway, yeah. let's get into the video. I mean, it's a whole, <laughs> yeah, let's, let's get into the video. I really want to hear your thoughts on it. Anything to say before we get started? No, oh, follow me. At Sydney Monet, S Y D N E Y M O N E T T. There it is. There you go, you savages that keep on asking me for their IGs, okay? All right, without further ado, let's get right in it. Hello, and welcome to The Grapevine. I'm your host, Ashley Acuna, and on today's episode, we're going to be talking about the war on masculinity. But before we get into it, let me introduce you to my panel. Give yourselves a round of applause. Woo! Thank you for joining me. Okay, so is there a war on masculinity or no? Yes. No. Yes. Yes. <laughs> okay, go ahead. What were um, your thoughts? I feel like I respect the fact that now the f female representation is extremely important. I think that their experience, it's important to highlight that me trying to elevate and keep a safe space for men to, 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 to feel how they want to feel and speak on topics that they want to, to, to speak on is okay. And we can have both. It doesn't have to, we, doesn't ha we, we don't have to kill one to elevate the other one. And I feel like that's what's happening right now. I feel like uh, the more that you know, the, the, the female agenda is being 
the more that is being propelled to the forefront, I feel like men are being Super pushed down. to the background a little bit more. Okay. Um, to the point where you, you don't even feel comfortable with having certain conversations because you're not sure on where certain people sit in terms of their stances. I mean, toxic masculinity now, just because you disagree with the a mindset that a woman may have when you're having a conversation with her, you're immediately accused of having toxic masculinity. No, I just don't agree with what you're saying. No, I have my own preference as a man. No, I have my opinions. And that doesn't mean that I'm toxic. That means that I'm free to feel how I want to feel. I'm a human being. Mm -hmm. And I feel like to be classified as being toxic because you disagree with what the masses or Can what social media. you an example of, of what you disagree with? So for me personally, I feel, <laughs> like, I feel like men are objectified heavily. I feel like men are objectified as well in social media. You look at this, you look. Gray sweatpants season, short season. I feel like nobody, <laughs> nobody. I'm not, I'm not trolling. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not trolling at all because I, as, as somebody, as some, as, as, as somebody who does deal with self-image issues as well. When I see those things, they do, they do, they, they trigger me as well in, in the same fashion. So I'm speaking from a place where I'm not gray sweatpants season. I'm not six abs season. I'm not beard beard gang season. So I know for a fact that me are objectified right we go through the same I'm not saying on the same level I'm not saying that we have more power and I get that but at the same time that doesn't take away from the fact that we also feel something as well so what I disagree with is a concept that we cannot express ourselves if we express ourselves sex sexually now we're being sexually aggressive right if we express if, if but if a woman expresses herself then it's like well she's just being free like she's just being free all right so I heard you say I don't think that that's true Specify. Okay, so he said, when we express ourselves sexually, that's us being sexually aggressive. No, it's when you express yourself in a sexually aggressive manner that you're being sexually aggressive. I disagree. Can I tell you why I disagree? Mm -hmm. Because it depends if she's attracted to you. Absolutely. But honestly, you could also also tell in like the first seven seconds if she's attracted to you. Like Maybe. Uh, and, and here's the maybe is because um, there's a lot of um, people that just like validation uh, and there's a lot of people that will uh, let you orbit in their circle because they get something out of that energy right and there's a lot of people who just like to be um, have people around them that will coddle them right or will adhere to their every um, desire or question right like how many how many um, um, and even in my life Women that I thought that might have been interested in a particular situation, I'm sitting on the phone with them wasting time but because they uh, they just want to have someone to talk to on the phone. You know what I mean? So it gets confusing. Okay, but like, still, I, like I, I have been guilty of like wasting people's time and like flirting, knowing mm -hmm. damn well, whatever. But I've only like accused, and I rarely have ever accused somebody of being like, I mean, not like legally, you know, but like mm -hmm. um, accused somebody of being like aggressive sexually when it was really like just too much, it's like too very much. handsy or like just very like the words were like vulgar, things like that. And it's mm -hmm. just like, and typically it's when they're like inebriated, so it's like, oh, of course. But mm -hmm. like, I just think that. It, I feel like most women, like if you're not being like that, I mean, maybe not most, because we have this whole Me Too movement going on. Yeah, there's, there's, the, there's the Me Too, and there's like a focus on, um, like I did a video not too long ago about, um, you know, um, women, women um, some of them wanting to be objectified, like walking outside with their, you know, but holes you in their think, shorts. And, do you think that comes and, from something, something deeper? No, no, I think maybe it could it could it could come from a, a, a need of validation It could yeah. also come from someone looking for a sugar daddy, right? It could also come yeah. from someone with insecurity problems um, it could also come from someone who um, Is with the whole slut walk movement and thinks that you know I can dress however I want to and not expect any type of male attention and I'm just showing my body because that's just what I want to show I mean, there's a bunch of different reasons as, as to what that, that is, but I think like... So like, much shade! No, <laughs> is that shade? 
Or is that truth? Is that reality? Is that is that is that truth or that or is that reality? Because so similar to my last point, I can't expect to go into the hood mm-hmm. and and not have smoke, right? I can't expect to go into the hood with a certain type of car, a hood that I'm not familiar with, and not have smoke. You can't expect to to have your titty holes out and walk on the street in front of a group of dudes and not expect that someone to be like, "Yo, what's up?" But because I said, <laughs> but but because I said, "Yo, what's up?" All of a sudden, it's a um, I'm objectifying you. But I don't think the yo, okay. I I definitely get that. There's some people that's like that. That's too much. And like I don't think that's crazy when guys do that. Like, I mean, whatever. It's like human name. Well, I want. That's like whatever. It's just whatever. But like. After the yo, what's up? If I'm like, it's fine, like I'm chill, and then you're like, all right, you skank ass bitch, like I ain't gonna. Then it's like, that's not like even sexually like that's just aggressive. Like, calm down. Yeah, and but I think that's a completely different conversation. I mean, at that, at that point, it just gets into respect. Yeah. But there's dudes who out there who deal with um, m- managing a relationship or a friendship with a woman who they are trying to get to that next level. And, um, you know, I mean, and dudes do it too. They can keep people around in a, in, in, in a situation ship, for example, because of their the ego or... To use them. Yeah, or, you know, they could be feeling lonely and they want someone in their, you know, in their car log that, that, that is a relative attractiveness to them, you know? So we can have it on both sides of the coin. But back to my man's point about uh, 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 objectifying... Um, uh, men, I mean, you know, it happens on that side too. Now, I'm not gonna oh, compare. Yeah, yeah. No, it does. It, it, it does. you know, the gray sweatpants and, and shit like that. Like, wasn't wrong. Yeah. I mean, it happens too. It goes too. both ways, and especially with black people too. We get objectified even more. The black men and the, I mean, yeah, black men and black women, like mm-hmm. back to slavery. You know, mm. they had zoos where they just where they just had, pick you, put you in in cages based on what you yeah. look like. Yeah, that's crazy. So it's it's a thing. It's a it's a thing. He made a lot of good points though. Let's get back in it. Other thing is too, this is a hour long video, so I'm not gonna go through the entire video. We'll just try to pick apart pieces yeah. that we think make sense in this conversation. Yeah. You ready to get back in or any other points before we get restarted? Let's get back in. She's just using the platform that she didn't have before. Now she's just taking it and pushing it forward because she didn't have a voice before. I don't I, I just I, I think that it's not agree fair. With what um, he said? I, I don't agree. Okay, you don't no. agree. <laughs> <laughs> I said you. I said you. Go ahead. And I just feel like when when you're privileged, right? Equality comes off as oppression. Mm-hmm. So, like, talk about like you feel like objectified, right? That's why I really thought you were trolling with the sweatpants thing. And it's like it's true. Like people, men do have body like images and do have gender dysmorphia, uh, body dysmorphia. They do feel like they don't feel comfortable and that they are themselves like put off by images of other men that are perfect, right? Like, I mean, hairlines trigger me. You know what I mean? Like, but <laughs> to be quite, <laughs> but I'm saying to be quite honest though, like what women are living in daily, right, is a system created by men, a patriarchy, that objectifies them everywhere they go. That from the moment they're raised, they are objectified. Mm-hmm. That, 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 um, that, that even something as like a tank top, what do we call it? We call it a wife beater. Mm. Mm. You know, we call that a wife beater. And that is like the common way of describing what a tank top is. Mm-hmm. And then these are terms that are just ingrained in our speech that, you know, are essentially advocating for violence against women. Mm-hmm. So I don't feel like there's a there's no war in masculinity. It's just that we're just evening the playing field. And it feels like it feels like we can't give our true opinions because for a long time we've been the only ones giving opinions. Mm-hmm. So does that's any, my thing. Does anybody think you Jack, does anybody think that there is a war in masculinity? Do you think so, Amar? Yeah. Okay, go ahead. But I think it's a, a righteous one. Like, it should be. Like, I think when I hear you talk about, like, oh, now I can't say da 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 I'm just interested in how this uh, confrontation brought on by women on, like, y'all need to stop with your bullshit. Has that been a learning moment? Like, I hear a lot of niggas talk about, can I say niggas? Can I say yeah. Niggas? yeah. <laughs> 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 you never, you never you know. You know. <laughs> But you know, you hear a lot of niggas say like, oh, I can't woo 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 woo. Like my women, you know, we chilling, we can't da 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 da. And it's like, word, but like that's what women have been going through. And I'm not saying that now you should have to go through that, but I'm saying how do you pause for a second instead of trying to reassert your 
your your dominance and your your known position, how do you take that step back and learn from what the women are saying? Marquise? I would just say, I do think holistically, yes, we live in a patriarchy and you know, women are dealing with things that men we don't have to do. But I think in, in certain spaces, I would say there is a war on masculinity. You know, we watch them, uh, you know, cultural phenomena like insecure and you know, people are saying all men are trash. And I, that's where I personally feel like it could be problematic. You know, obviously there are men that have certain characteristics, but it's not all men. And you can call those things out and without necessarily putting down. What's up? I just feel like, okay, not disclaimer, like right here. Not all, not all men are trash, but I understand what, it's a joke, Haiki, because it's like, not this shit again. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, I'm sure married women will are like, no, literally not all men are trash. But like, it was obviously a, a phrase created by like, women who are dating. And so it's like, basically like, damn, not this shit again, you know, like. You don't think that it's a real thing? That some, that, so certain women absolutely believe that all men are trash. I think we just get frustrated. Okay, and then we just attribute that phrase to date, the dating game. And there are some things, okay, because like I also feel like there's some things that it's like, oh, of course, like th there's some characteristics that it's like all guys have, they're one or another, and then it's like, like um, damn, okay. Like, so a thing a lot of guys always do is that. They always say they're gonna do things and then they never follow through. And they it just make these like, it, whether it'll be like a date or like a gift or like a trip and it'll like, you'll always be like, yeah, we should do that, like we should plan that. And those things never come to fruition. And that is like, just why do you even bring it up? And this happens constantly and I've talked to like a lot of women about it and it's like a, yeah, and that's the thing. And it's just like, uh, like, that's when when you talk to a lot of women and it happens to everybody and it's like all oh, men are really trash that's where that comes from so so that's specific to consistency so you see an inconsistency in the men um that you date is it a black man thing is what you're saying well here's the thing i only have dated black men so i can't say it's only a black men thing but it is a black man thing because that's all i've dated you know but i don't know if white men that may outside of that yeah. Do, you, do you, you think that there's other things attributed besides being a man that can lend to that inconsistency? Right, because it's it, so, so the thing is, is like, I think one of the core tenets of masculinity is a dude who doesn't, uh, uh, who's a man of his word, right? Okay, and what were you done? What were you gonna say? I'm really working on not cutting people off. I'm not doing a good job at it. So basically, so basically, so that's my thing about defining like masculinity. Like I totally agree. Like that's another thing too, is that like to be a man, you have to, like accountability is one of those things. And also to be a woman too, like you should be able, that's kind of like that one video. But, so yeah. So I, I, I hear what you're saying, and you know I, I still all attribute it back to a human nature thing, like that inconsistency. It, it it's y'all as well, right? Like yeah. how how often do you make a time for something? And, and maybe you guys she's, complain hold about on, this. Hold on, let me let me keep going. Okay. How often do you make a time for something and then you don't show up at that time, or you cancel plans, or you change things? last minute you are so, shading me so hard so, right now so so but these things happen in in a way that um i hear what you're saying mm -hmm. and here's what the immediate thing that i think is that the reason that that man in that relationship has become inconsistent is because he sensed inconsistency from you absolutely not oh no no so even though i'm calling out things that you look like not your reaction is like that, okay i understand what that means that so you don't flake on dudes you don't, you don't Not make- Not guys I'm interested in. You don't, you don't make- Well, hold up. We mean guys that you're interested in. That's, that's flaky. Okay, everybody does that. But what's so not you, cool you, is to be like here's the next trying thing I to commit to you. somebody and so, flake. So you also don't make dates for something and then show up 30 minutes late, 45 minutes late. Do you also do those things? Well, hold up. So, <laughs> so, let's 
listen. Uh, uh, so, so I think that when you say absolutely not from the con a consistency perspective, I think that there also has to be an, an attribution of how I might have contributed to that to a situation as well. No, I, I think there's a responsibility on both sides. And I do not disagree. But what I'm saying is that, like, it's in some regards, like, yeah, people can work on their time management. Mm -hmm. I agree. But outside of that, I just feel like it depends. Like, I'm not going to flake on somebody that, like, I'm dating. You know what I mean? Like, to flake on somebody who you didn't really give a fuck about giving your number anyways is something different. It's different. Okay. So, yeah. Okay. But you mean once you get into the relationship, once you're dating, once you're feeling each other, you expect a certain degree of consistency within that. Yeah. And and it's not true from your situation as well as your homegirl situations as well. Yeah, we're pretty consistent, man. Uh, yeah. But it's just no. The thing is, is the like making promises that you have no intentions on keeping. That is like the you just shouldn't have opened your mouth. But but you don't think that that's a human thing? I think no, that's because a you could tell when a nigga just says some shit, and you like you know you're not gonna do this. Why are you even talking? Like. No. So you think that's a guy thing? You think that's a masculinity thing? If I think a man would only say what he's gonna do and do what he's gonna say, and I think others just talk reckless and don't do half the things they say. Okay. I mean, to to each his own. I you know I I hear what you're saying, and I I still I I I've been involved in situations where. The guy, the uh, woman was was more flaky, and I had my friends talk about situations, and they're like, "Yo, the situation was going so good," and then all of a sudden she just stopped reaching back out to me, or you know what I mean, like, or you yeah. know, all of a sudden she started to disrespect my time. All of a sudden, and I mean, you know, a lot of that is I just understand. it's a it's a human thing. I don't think it's necessarily a guy thing or a masculinity thing. Like, I think that it's a you know, it, it's it's a it's the dating game thing. It's the it's the bullshit that you have to be involved in in the dating game. I think it's a component. But I, you know, I, at the same time, I can't just sit over here and just say it's a like it's a guy thing. Like it, it, you guys are just as savage. It's just you for guys some are reason just as you guys are more popular for it. You guys are just in, yeah, but why believe what everyone else tells you? It's not what everyone else tells me. It's like it's not what popular girl the. Da, 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 da. And she's like, girl, me too. And then it's like, girl, me too. And it's like, what the F? Put that down. Here, here's, 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 here's part of the no, problem. Can I finish drinking it? Here, here, here's part of the problem is that I think that um, it, it's, it's really easy. Mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's really easy to um, accept what you and your homegirls talk about when it comes to dudes. I think the difficulty is to hear it on the opposite side of the coin to understand the struggles that we go through as well. So I think like if you start out and you're like mid twenties and you continue to think that it's a guy thing, I think you are going to dis dis disable yourself going to the dating game into the future because I think it it requires right. a degree. Hold on, the it requires a degree of empathy to understand that possibly potentially. We go through the same things that you guys are talking about. But I'd argue that it's amplified because guys, we have been taught, we have been socialized that you guys are waiting for love, that you are these beautiful, unique, delicate flowers. And once you get yourself a good one, all you got to do is just just cultivate <laughs> that. You just put that seed into the ground. You put some water on it. You provide her some protection, some security, and then she's going to bloom. And then you guys are going to live happily ever after. But that's not 2019. No, but you guys are just as much savages out here as we are. Your rosters are just, as, just as deep, just as long, and just as... Uh, uh, huh. Interesting as ours are. I'm not disagreeing with any of that. Okay. I'm not. I don't disagree with those things. I'm just saying, you guys, look, okay, if that is the truth, y'all niggas need to do, brothers, need to do a better job. A better at job. 
being low key and keeping your business to yourself and out the streets is all I'm saying. And then maybe it would be different. The conversation would be different. Our business? What you mean? Because why are guys so much more? That was in a good sentence. Known for like just. I don't want to say like being trash, but like that's we're not. You're not. It's the people trash, who you. And I don't want to sound like I'm thing. bashing you guys. Well, I'm not. it's the people that you're surrounding yourselves with. If you surround yourself with a bunch of homegirls that are experiencing similar things, um, but I think conversations like this is key to understanding yeah. the other side of the coin. And if you and I think like as long as we keep going on these parallel paths and not understanding each other sides of the coin, because there can't be a healing. Like there can't be a there's no merging at an intersection. It, it's a you'll get to 35 years old, you have hit a wall, you are no longer as attractive as what, you know, what you've been in your 20s, and all of a sudden your eggs are like now shriveled up little, little no, I got sucked out grapes. Before then. And it's... <laughs> That's so scary. Or you get up to there and you settle with some dude who was fifth place. No, I cannot do that one. Yeah. So I was like, well, how can we figure if, out if these that, things if, earlier? If I can't have the little kiddos, then I'll just be like the coolest aunt. Like, go down in history as the dopest aunt in, in American history. In American history. Yeah. And Cuban history. Are and you Cuban? You have Cuban? Yeah. That's right. That's right. Boom. We got Latino on the show. All right. Uh, Want to keep going? Yeah. All right. Let's keep going. Hopefully they start talking about a different point here soon. Yeah. Down the entire group of folks. Mm -hmm. um, and in addition to that, you know, I would just say, <laughs> oftentimes, and I think everyone is, ca you know, through society is cast out, you know, who I am as a 27-year-old is different than me at 22. But oftentimes, people don't give uh, people an opportunity to grow, to learn. I mean, people, you know, Al Sharpton, they say, oh, he's a terrible person, you know, but yes, he has some ways that people may not agree with, but he's also grown. And people don't allow people to grow into, you know, become into themselves. I know I've said things, you know, previously that I may not be proud of, but I know today, I would go about them differently. You know, I, I mean, because that growth usually comes at the expense of women. Yeah, exactly. Right, and that's yeah. fair enough. I just yeah. feel like, is there a war masculinity? Yes, because there's it's always grouped in a sense in certain spaces, and I think just allow opening that up. You know, there could be some we can learn, and I think men we need to teach other men. Women, if you so choose, we can help us to grow in you know in that space. I have a quick question. Go ahead. Because I, I think this is important. Like, is what question. is masculinity, and how are we defining it? And the reason why I thought about this, because in coming to this panel, I was like, it, I, you know, what is there a war on masculinity? And I was thinking about my definition of it, and frankly, it's changed. What's your definition? I don't know to completely, because uh, I know that for me, how I, how, what makes me feel like a man many times is the fact that I know that my, my son is fed well, that, that my right. wife is provided for, mm -hmm. that, you know, my friendships are stable and we can talk to each other and, and feel good about it. Like, like, and you know, those are just three things that I thought of immediately that I'm, I know for me 10 years ago was not that. You know, number one, I wasn't married yet, but you know what I'm saying? But, but I just had a different view of, of my relationships, a different view of what masculine energy was. Like, frankly, my masculine energy 10 to 15 years ago came straight from my dick. Like how many girls? How many girls can I get? Yes. You know, uh, what kind of? You know, I mean, this isn't really ridiculous, but but like, what kind of athlete I was? I was a better athlete than you. I'm, I'm puffing my chest out. I could lift more than you. Like that's what I thought right. masculine masculinity was, and now I don't think it's that. So now the question is, you know, as a culture, are we moving towards a different definition of masculinity, whatever that is? And is that? And are the men maybe? further behind than the women want us to be. I think that's where we, you know, I don't Go ahead. know. I see everybody saying. Go ahead, Jimmy. All right, so he talked about his uh, definition of masculinity. How do you feel about his definition or do you have a different definition? I think we're just making these unnecessary, like, honestly, I don't even think it's like people, but I think it's like <sighs> conspiracy theory type shit that like others are creating these unnecessary conflicts between people like i think like just because you're a straight man people will automatically assume that you are homophobic or like you hate or especially black men like people mm -hmm. just automatically assume that they just hate these things maybe and even if they don't agree with like like you can disagree with something and hate and not hate somebody you know and mm -hmm. i think that people 
um, will say like, oh, like that person disagrees with it, so like they hate me, they don't want whatever. And it's like, no, as long as they're not like interfering with your life, you know, like you can think what you want to think. Mm -hmm. But I think that also when men express differing opinions, it's pinned as toxic masculinity. I see. Yeah, um, and I think that shit needs to stop. I'm, I'll be honest with you, because um, I think taking away someone's right to ideas is not only incorrect, it's un-American. All right, well, let's cap off the video right now. We made it eight minutes in out of a 53-minute video. I think there was a lot of points in there. We tried to stick to the masculinity thing, but I think naturally other conversations come up within that. Which are just as good, so. Anything to say before we sign off? No. Nah. Alright, well this has been your video. I am your host. Mediocre tutorials and reviews, questions, comments, concerns. Leave it down in the description box down below. Alright?